prospecting in the 21st century. He used Facebook, Twitter, Meerkat, if you want to write this down, M-E-E-R-K-A-T. It's, it's a new app. It just came out maybe five weeks ago. M-E-E-R. Are you, are you streaming right now? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll just show you. I'll show you. See if I can go in here and show you. I just turned it on. How many agree the world is changing? How many agree with that? Technology is changing things. Would you agree? Now, you can, you can fight it if you want to. This didn't exist, uh, I don't know, maybe two months ago. Let's see. Am I in here right now? I don't see you, Elena. Oh, there it is. Okay. Can you see this? Is it showing, Elena? No, not yet on the... It's not, we're, we just started okay. mobbing, but you're, it's not showing on your computer. Oh. There it is. Oh, is that me? This didn't exist, I don't know, maybe two months ago. I'm oh, sorry, is that me right there? Okay, you're watching a live stream right now, okay? We're not connected to anything. This computer over here has more connections going on than that phone does. Oh, there it is. If my wife can figure out how to do this, <laughs> okay? It took three people to figure out this setup over here. Look at all the equipment over here. Like thousands of dollars of equipment over here. She's got a telephone streaming this live conference. All these people over here are talking to me, okay? Okay, so I can now say hello from Prague. You see, see, it's in a delay, right? You see the delay? Now, this did not exist six weeks ago. This technology did not exist. It's called M-E-E-R-K-A-T. You want to get on this now, okay? You can stream from your company and let the whole world know about you. Why would you want me to know about you in Miami? Okay? It's been a mistake for years that we would target market. How many were to be brought up to target, to target your marketing dollars? Okay, I'm gonna advertise a market only in this. Folks, the, 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 the new way to market is global. You wanna, you wanna get attention around the world. That's why what Katrina's doing is so valuable and so important. Okay, because she's basically starting to communicate with the world. The mistake I made for 25 years in businesses it, it, in my businesses was I focused my targeting to my audience and it stayed vertical. You understand what I mean by vertical? It was in this narrow silo. This was a mistake because my business can only grow as in this way, up and down. Microsoft, Apple, Caterpillar, Google, they go wide, they go this way, right? They go vertical, they go vertical and wide. They communicate everywhere, Starbucks around the world. Why should you have a Starbucks? It's a little company that started in Seattle and have one right here in Prague. How many do you have in Prague, by the way? Seven? For, for a town of a million and a half people? You got a, you got a freaking Starbucks? Like, those, those were Prague coffee shops should have been there, right? I'm not saying it's good or bad, I'm just saying, whoever communicates the most wins the game. Did you get my attention, okay? Do I even see your store, right? She, she, her dress is because they got my attention. Lit up, in a window, names there, phone number. We changed our trip. Jonas shows up at the church. Hey, Grant, how you doing? Compared to the taxi driver, I'm sad. Man, there's a big variation right there. And, and in the variation between I'm sad and don't want to work to I'll ride my bike to get attention, between those is opportunity. Would you agree? Opportunity for you to grow, for your community to grow, for your businesses to grow, for Prague to grow. <clears throat> so I know this seems strange. You're like, well, what's this guy doing? He's, he, he's showing me this stream, okay? Um, let me see if I can pull up this one other thing. You know Madonna? You know this name, Madonna? Everybody knows Madonna. You didn't know me, though. Okay? 
Uh, that's a picture of me right there. And that's my dog. Okay? Now, what am I doing right behind Madonna? I'm the third uh, most active watched person in the world behind Madonna. I'm a businessman. Madonna's an entertainer. Her audience is so much bigger than mine. Okay? Why would I want that kind of attention? What do you think? What does that have to do with my books or my real estate company? I'll tell you what it has to do. Uh, we live in Miami. I own some property in a place called Daytona Beach. Okay, it's about five hours from where I live. I own a big apartment complex there. A friend of mine that's in Chicago knows that I own property in Florida because I posted it on Facebook. He calls me one day, I have friends moving to Daytona. Can you, what's the name of your apartment building there? I said, the name of the building is Integra Shores. He diverts his people to my property. They rent the property. They sign a 10 month lease. It's business, okay? Communication is business. This, these are technologies. Twitter is a technology to communicate, okay? My, my, my goal is not to talk to you about Facebook and Twitter. They're not gonna even be here five or 10 years from now. The internet might change. Email will disappear in your lifetime. But something else will replace it. Would you agree? It might be me standing on a street corner. Like, like there, was, there was four tables, four tables that were vacant at, at Kalina's last night. Because all the employees stay inside the building. And I wondered, why don't they just hire another person to stand outside and say, come in. Look at our menu. Is that against the law here? Is it? I'm, I'm curious. No. Invite me in, man. You have great food. You have great prices. You have great service. Why not tell somebody? How many agree? How, how, many, how many of you believe in the company that you work for? How many of you like your company? Good. How many of you like your product? You believe in your product. Let me see a hand if you believe in your product. Good, good, good. How many of you believe in you? You're like, I believe I'm a good person. Why don't you tell anybody? Why don't you tell someone? If you had a Ferrari in your garage, is that a good car here? You like Ferraris? Is that a bad word? You got, a, you got two Ferraris <laughs> in your garage. Would you want to use them? What do you think? You have a great business, great business, you have a great product, you're a good person, and you don't tell anybody. Why? This happens all over the world, folks, okay? You got people all over the world not telling people about their companies. Now, I don't know, I don't know how you were brought up, but I was brought up not to get too much attention. Did your parents teach you that? Don't get too much attention. Any, any of your parents teach you that? That's the way I was brought up. Okay, let's see, let's see how different the Czech Republic is from America. How many of you, your parents taught you not to talk to strangers? Let me see a hand if your parents said, don't talk to strangers. Okay, that's what I was taught. How many of your parents taught you to turn the lights out when you left the room? Turn the lights out. How many of your parents, every time your mom fed you dinner, she told you, eat it all? Huh? Oh, I see. We have more similarities between America and the Czech. Than, right? Is it possible that it's very similar? Okay. My kids, my three-year-old, my six-year-old have never been told don't talk to strangers, ever. Okay. I tell them to talk to strangers. You need to talk to strangers. You need to talk to all the strange people. They got some strange people on this planet. Just talk to them, okay? And a lady says, I can't believe you teach your kids to talk to strangers. We were on a flight from South America back to Miami. I had done a five-day speaking conference on a ship. And my three-year-old at the time was sitting with me in the front, uh, the front uh, row of the plane. And she said, Papa, I want some cookies. I said, baby, you want some cookies? 
Go get you some cookies. We're at 38,000 feet. Okay. Two and a half hours left on a flight. 232 people on the plane. How many think there's cookies on this plane? What do you think? I don't have any cookies. I'm not the cookie guy. I said, baby, you want cookies? They're all behind you. You go talk to strangers. She's three years old. So you get, you get, get on those little short legs of yours, pop up on the floor, and you start asking people who's got the cookies. You understand this? Is this terrible? She's like, Papa, I'm scared. Then don't do it. You want the cookies? Move through your fear. Where should, who, what should I say? You got some cookies? <laughs> okay, that's all you got to do. You don't need to work it out. Just go, go ask people. You're three years old, man. People will not. That, how, how many believe kids can sell? Kids don't sell. Kids close. They don't even bother with the sale. Give it to me. How many of you got kids? Let me see your hands if you have kids. Give it to me right now. Right? So, my, who should I start with, Papa? I said, I would start with the flight attendant. I'd walk up to the flight attendant. You know? He's in a galley. The galley's a kitchen on a plane. That's what it's called. I'm taking the time to teach her. She walks up. She's like, Mister, you got some cookies? He's like, he didn't even look. And he says, no. <laughs> Three years old, my daughter says, check. <laughs> and that's not check for public. It's check. Check, look, man. Look for some cookies. Okay, she's been going to school since she was three years old. We put her in schools at three years old. We said, look, teach her Spanish. When she's done with Spanish, take her to Chinese. Immerse her. They're like, don't you think that would be too much? Three years ago, she didn't know English. Right? We immersed her in the English, you understand? She comes out of mama, little baby. We delivered at home. No medication, didn't go to the hospital. Found out my wife was pregnant. The doctor said, you guys are pregnant, congratulations. Good, doc, I need you to come to the house in nine months and deliver at the house. He's like, well, you gotta, you gotta do this in the hospital. Do y'all deliver here or at hospitals here? Hospitals, right? In America, we, we, everybody likes to go to the hospital. I don't know why they like to go to the hospital. That's where sick people are. But So I told the doctor, I said, look, you're going to come to the house and help me do this, okay? I just need some help. I don't know what I'm doing. I said, but I started it at my house. I started this process at my house. We're going to end it at the house. So you have to be dangerous sometimes, would you agree, to have real experiences? Maybe, maybe not. You think not? Okay, but, but I have to get attention. So my little girl walks up to the, to the galley and says, Mister, you got some cookies? He's like, no, I don't. And he's, she says, check. My little girl comes back. She's got cookies. He finds the cookies, right? She brings them to me. Papa, can I have the cookies? I'm like, look, if you can go get them, you can have them. The point of that story is this. Strangers, if you're taking notes, you want to write this down. Strangers are the expansion of your business. Strangers, people you have not yet met. I don't have to advertise to meet those people today. I don't have to spend money on TV or radio today to meet those people. I do need to get their attention though, however that is. So what is sales anyway, all right? What is sales? You know that Starbucks is sitting right outside the uh, church there where we went to the concert. I mean, that's as good a location as you could possibly have on planet Earth. <clears throat> First, they have to get my attention, and then they have to transact, transact with me. The definition of sales is the action of persuading or influencing another to a course of action or to the acceptance of something happening. That's what sales is. Sales is not all this other stuff that people think, trickery, lies, deception. Real sales, it's not pressure, real sales is the action of persuading, sounds like a science to me. How many of you think you'll be involved in that activity somewhere in your lifetime? It's not a job, folks. It's not a job. This is how, this is how people get their life to transact. This is how I get uh, her to go out with me. This is how I buy a piece of real estate. I have to convince 
persuade, influence someone to sell me something. So when I'm the buyer on a piece of real estate, or I'm trying to buy somebody's company, like we created a television network. I'm trying to buy other companies right now to expand my television network. When I go buy someone's company, I'm actually still selling. Because I'm trying to influence or persuade another to a course of action. Any expansion then would require someone to do some selling. Would you agree? I want to go, I want to go uh, hire somebody from Microsoft. Influence or persuade another to a course of action. See, there's people in your organization that when you say the word sales, they're like, oh, no, no, that's not me. Right? Oh, no, 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 I'm not selling anything to anybody, ever, never, ever. Won't happen. I'd rather be sad. <laughs> how, how is your business going to get better if somebody doesn't get attention and then persuade? Right? First, I got to get attention. Hey! Oh, I got your attention now. Excited today. Hey! See, whatever it takes. I mean, look, this is a noisy world you live in. Would you agree? Right? If I, if I go, this is how noisy the world is today. Let me just go back here to Twitter, and I'm going to put in Prague. And we're going to find out. Oh, there I am still talking. Okay, I'm going to go to Prague. I'm going to put in Prague. Let's see what they're saying about Prague today on Twitter. This is how noisy the world is. Oh, Grant Cardone's talking about Prague today. You guys talking about it? Uh, 585 ratings on this one comment right here, okay? These are people watching this right now. Uh, let's see, these are people talking about Prague. Watching live on Periscope, Grant Cardone rocking Prague. I'm rocking Prague right now. Madonna's not rocking Prague, I'm rocking Prague. Okay, all right, you see that? Okay, uh, Michael Sikora, the networker TV, at the gym listening live from Prague. Grant Cardone, okay. Madonna's not rocking Prague with the gym, with this guy. Look at this guy, he's got all his weights. A friend of mine flattered a French lady by saying Paris is the most beautiful city in the world. She said, Prague. Okay, here's other people talking about Prague. Here's a, a friend of mine, last night wrote us, George Magda in Prague 10 years ago, showed us a photo. He's in Miami, by the way talking about Prague. Now, my point is this, we're talking about it, okay? Now, let me just go here to top news, top news in Prague. How many of you Google something before you go to the city? Of course, who wouldn't, right? I want some information. Here's all, is this scary just looking at this? News, all the latest and breaking. You know we're getting into negativity land now, right? <laughs> Okay, here we go. Here we go. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is this is your competition here. This, your problem is not the, the, the person down the street that sells a similar product for less. Your, prop, your biggest competition, if you're taking notes today, is the media. The thing, that will, the thing that will cause your business to stay smaller, longer than any other thing, is the noise of the world. This is noise and competition. I don't know why this is not coming up. It's so negative it can't come up. guys liking this? I love all the retweets. I like all the likes. Thank you guys so much. See, people lose interest if it takes too long, right? Okay, sports. Uh, I saw this morning there was a cab driver. Cab drivers were uh, took advantage of someone. Uh, is this competition for you right here? 
even this news right here, international football, is that competition? The moment your customer gets distracted by this, they're not your customer. I don't have their attention anymore. So, so my, my question to you today, what are you doing to compete with the attention of the world today? How noisy are you? Are you getting people's attention? Are you using all the mechanisms to say, hey, the first rule of success, the first step is attention. The second step would then be to transact with someone called selling. And to go back to this definition, Okay. In America, the sales, nobody wants to do sales in America. America is becoming a country where it's like anything that created, anything that made America a great country, it's going away now. Like, I don't know if any of you have you been to America. You can't get service there. You can't get people to pay attention to you there. Uber shows up in America and decimates taxis. Like, literally decimates them. You have Uber here, right? Okay. Unbelievable. Why, why did Uber work? Because it replaced a technology that didn't pay attention to me. Call a cab driver. Cab driver showed up late, car was dirty, okay? Not nice to me, bad attitudes. She can Uber, she'll have somebody here in six minutes. I don't have to pay anybody anything. I don't have to worry about exchanges. I don't have to worry about credit cards. I don't have to worry about somebody telling me we don't take American Express. They're like, hey, we don't have to take anything. We'll just have it on account. We'll collect it later. They built a business out of a problem, okay? Sales was the action of persuading. How did they get cabs to go away overnight? Literally in Miami, Uber Love is everybody's that. choice. It's not a cab anymore. Nobody wants to wait. The action of persuading, was that a sale? What do you think? I'm trying to sell you right now. I'm trying to sell you. I'm trying to get you, persuade you, to influence you to another course of action right now. To say, look, get attention. Your business depends on it. My daughters, my daughter, my three-year-old, my six-year-old, I do not believe that their ability to read and write is more important than their ability to get attention. Nobody, nobody's allowed to tell my kids that they're shy. So a, a lady the other day, my, my daughter walks up to somebody and the ladies, and she, my daughter doesn't want to transact with the lady. She pulls back and the lady says, oh, your daughter's shy. I said, my daughter's not shy. My daughter doesn't like you. you my, my daughter does not have interest in you. You don't need to make my daughter wrong because she doesn't have interest in you. Get her attention. It's easy enough. It's a three-year-old. Okay. It's easy enough to get somebody's attention. Would you agree? The kid's not shy. Kids are made oh to become shy. Would you agree? Kids are introverted not to talk to strangers because there's one bad person in Prague. Now we don't want to talk to anyone. And that's why Kalinas doesn't have somebody standing outside the door saying, hey, come on in. Because somebody said that that's not proper business. When the truth is, if you have a good product, Good company, you take care of people, you have good service, the proper business would be what? Please. You would never have a closed door in Prague. The doors would be open. Would you agree? Come in, please. But you see, there's some bad connotation about selling and right? Getting attention. Okay? So why why sales? Why is sales important? Okay, you show me another way to expand your company without selling something. Show me how to do that. Oh, we're going to advertise and market. Advertising and marketing is changing today. The return on investment for you to run an ad on the front paper, on a TV, and radio, to do all three, it's getting lost. Would you agree? The return on investment is so low today, people are like, how do I do that? How do I even make sense of it? Does Starbucks spend money in advertising? Yeah, I'm periscoping. They spend money on locations. I'm meerkatting for granted. Would you agree? But I think I'm they spend money on what? Attention. Going to they buy the location. When I buy real estate, my first question is this, or when I rent a hotel, okay, when we, when we got a hotel, we leave here, we go to Madrid. I said, give me a Ritz, a Four Seasons, or something similar as close to a Starbucks as possible. I use Starbucks as my stable datum because I know Starbucks will be in a location where there's high traffic. It'll be safe, right or wrong. Okay, you guys. Go find a brand that mirrors 
It's not going to be in a slum. They closed all those. Why sales? Okay, sales is the only way to expand your business. Whether you own real estate, software company, you have a labor, you're in the housing industry, you're in clothing, you're in financial services. The only way to expand, to grow a business is through sales. Number two, it gets more money. I need revenue, okay? How many of you are taught to save money? Your parents no, taught just, you to save money. I just ended my periscope. I mean, okay. Show me a rich person that used that. Show me a rich person that used that as the way to get rich. You don't get rich saving money. You get old. I, I know this is, turn the lights out. Save the pennies. You know this saying? A penny saved is? A penny earned. A penny earned. You know this saying? A penny saved? You don't know this one? Okay. The other one's hit, right? The other one's worked. Okay. My dad used to say, a penny saved is a penny earned. It's a penny, man. It's still a penny. Okay. Turn the lights out. Why? What's the big deal about the lights? Who's, who's turning the lights out? In Vienna. You know what the guy tells me in Vienna? I said, hey, man, how's the economy in Vienna? Oh, it's all right. Oh, wow. You seem excited about it. It is very expensive. Very expensive to live here. Why don't you leave? Oh, I moved here. Okay, you left a place that was cheaper to come to Vienna, and now you're sad because it's expensive. Yes, yeah, very expensive to live here. What can you do about it? Nothing. <laughs> why don't you move to Prague? I heard it's cheaper there. Oh, I can't imagine that. Why don't you jump off a building? Oh no, I would much rather make everyone miserable. My, my point is this, okay? What could he do to change his condition? Huh? Earn more. He can't save any more money. It's impossible. Most people do not produce enough to save enough. So they're in this trap, okay? They're in this trap. Because if you look at a financial statement, if a financial statement is that long, how much of it is about income? Only a little bit. Would you agree? This is the power of income. That much controls the whole statement. Most people spend all their time on the bottom half of the statement. Business owners stay small because they spend time on the bottom half of their financial st statement rather than the top half. What is on the top half, by the way? So, huh? Revenues. What's revenue another word for? It used to be gross sales. And some accountant said, we should call that revenue. It's probably Ernst Young. We should change that name from sales because that's really nasty. It's a nasty damn word. And we're going to call it revenue. That's a big college word. Right? Man, it's sales. Income. It's income. What's the other thing? Expenses. Okay? I spend 5% of my time in my company. I spend 5% of my time looking at my expenses and 95% of my time looking at this much. Most people spend 95% on the budget and 5% on the income. Invert it, flip it, and spend 95% of your time on income, 5% of the time on expenses. Expenses are not your problem. Debt is not your problem, okay? In America, the Americans are taught debt, don't use debt, and don't spend money. If you don't use debt and you don't spend money, you will never get rich. It is impossible. Apple, Apple, one of the richest country, uh, companies on planet Earth is borrowing money from the Japanese right now because it's so cheap. They have cash in the bank, hundreds of billions of dollars of cash in the bank, and they're still borrowing money. Why would they do that? Because it's smart. But most people are taught what? Don't spend money, contract, stay small. This is a problem for you. You're playing defense, not offense. You cannot win playing defense in business. It is impossible. It's impossible to win any game playing defense all the time. So if you like this idea, you would flip. If you're an executive at your company, I want you to flip and say, hey, I'm spending 95% of my time, my meetings on income, 5% on budgets. A 
budget is a contraction. Would you agree? The concept of I'm going to budget. Why would somebody budget, by the way? I mean, you, got, you need to budget at some point. But how many of you have customers? They can't spend with you because of their budget. Do you have customers that say that? We can't spend because the, the, we're over budget. Okay, create more customers. How do you do that? Number one, you get attention, okay? You get attention. Hey, hey, can you see me here? Storefront, stand in front of people, talk, do meetings, go to the school events, go to community events, go to church events, give out business cards, be on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google, right? Be out there in the world writing articles every day. YouTube, you have YouTube here? Seem like a worldly thing. So in the last five years, I've, I've posted 1,800 videos on YouTube in the last five years. Divide five years into 1,800, that's about 350 videos a year. 350 videos a year. There's 365 days in American calendar. How does that convert to Czech Republic? 365, somewhere in there? Give or take, same thing? Okay, we have some similarities. That's one video every day. I drop a video on YouTube almost every day of the year. Why would I do that? Every day, about my business. Sales, marketing, promotion, Grant Cardone's the best, Grant Cardone's magnificent, Grant Cardone is the, the it, right? Did your parents te teach you not to toot your own horn? How many of you heard that before? Mm -hmm. Don't toot your own horn. Mm -hmm. How many heard that? Why I have a horn? Did your parents tell you not to eat your cake? Have, you want your cake and to eat it too? How many of you taught that before? Why, 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 why else would you make a cake if you're not going to eat it too? These are just crazy sayings that your parents came up with. Their parents probably gave it to them. Would you agree? So I need to identify a need, okay? First, I got to get attention. I got to know what my market is. Who am I talking to? I'm talking to sales organizations talking to businesses, uh, I want to help people. Oh, so what are my videos going to be about? Which, what's, your company, what's your business? Strategic consultancy and law. In law? Yeah. Law? Okay, so you provide a service, could you help me? Of course. What could you do for me? Uh, I like it. How do you like his confidence, of course? I love that puppy too, you know, I got a puppy. Of course I could help you. What could you do for me? If I was coming to if I was coming to Prague to start a business, you would help me with the legal part, right? Definitely. Now, look, look at the confidence. Definitely. And I'm good looking too. <laughs> I have good hair. Right? Now watch. If I don't know him, will I do business with him? So number one, get attention. Number two, identify the need. Mr. Cardone, what is your need? Hey, I'm coming to Prague, man. I'd like to do some business while I'm here. I'd like to get to know people. I'd like to communicate with people. I'd like to do something together. This is what Katrina does. Katrina's like, she find, uh, Katrina finds out about me. She gets my attention. Hey, Grant, let's do some business together. This is needed all over Europe. This is not being taught in Europe. We're not talking about walking on fire here, folks. I'm not talking about getting motivated. I'm talking about giving people real skills, simple steps. Get attention, identify a need. What is your need? Do you want to grow your business? Do you want to grow your sales? Is something keeping you small? How many of you believe you could get bigger than you are right now? How many believe that? How many believe you did not get all the money available in Prague last month? You didn't get it all, right? Okay. You had a great month, great quarter, your company's doing great. You didn't get it all. So that's how I measure my company. Did we get it all? No. Okay. Let's get more attention. Never been easier today than getting attention, creating a video, okay? I can create a video, drop it on YouTube, and call it uh, Legal Services in Prague. And I'm good looking too. <laughs> Whatever, I don't know, it's his video. There's no regulation. Nobody can stop him from doing that video. It can be as professional, as long, as short as he wants it to be, and it costs him nothing. Except he's got to go against some of what his parents taught him or the last 30 years or 60 years. You know, uh, the gentleman last night told me, uh, uh, what, Jonas. Jonas told me he's a first generation capitalist. What, what does this mean? 
Is that true? It really is true, right? He's got a startup. He's like, I want to, this is what he told me. I want to move my startup from Prague to Miami. Why would he want to move? There's no reason to move. Why? Number three, build a value proposition. What is the value proposition? What does that mean? Do your people understand what a value proposition is? It's a very, very specific thing that you know, hey, I've just built value. I'm gonna make a proposition. I'm gonna make an offer and I'm gonna close the transaction. Here's some sales facts. You should write these down or take a picture of this screen. 87%, this is a worldwide number by the way, 87% of all sales organizations miss quota. They do not hit their quota. Typically what happens is the manager then lowers the quota for everybody. That's the solution to missing quotas, the new solution. 87% of all sales organizations miss quota. So what does the manager do? Let's drop the quota. I think we can follow Jonas no, on Twitter. I'll have to find out. They then miss that quota. Let's lower it again, okay? 64% of companies worldwide don't nurture leads. They run an ad on Google, Facebook, TV, radio. They run an ad and then they don't nurture, nurture, follow up the lead, okay? So do you know if you hit my website, if you go to grantcardone.com or you Google my name and then hit me, and let's say it's two o'clock in the morning there and there's nobody to answer, 64% of those companies don't have a program to nurture the lead to call him back. If you hit my website off of an ad that I've run, I know that I have to call you between eight and 12 times to talk to you the first time. Do your, does your company know that? You hit my site, I'm interested in your product, you fill out the form. How many of you have a landing, some kind of landing page where Jones, you fill out you're something? Famous now. Good, we have that. We spend a lot of time and energy getting the landing form, okay? People fill in the information, I have to call that person eight times to talk to them the first time. They showed interest, eight phone calls. Now, if your sales team or your follow-up team doesn't know that, what are they gonna do after two phone calls? Oh, they're not interested, okay? So not only do I need to get people's attention, but I have to keep their attention. Number three, 48% of all sales organizations never follow up the first time. Okay, I think I'm gonna Now, I'm showing you these numbers not to make you sad the way my, my cab driver was today, the driver, okay? Got to say, he's still sad too. How many think he's sad right now? He's sad, man, he's a sad man, okay? He should be locked up for a couple of days. You should take him off the streets of Prague, put him away, Get him fixed up and bring him back out where he's about bright and shining. Welcome to Prague. Uh, Eighty percent of all salespeople don't make a, a call, a contact after the fifth contact. And number, the last one is seventy-two percent of all companies never present a proposal. I showed interest in your product, and nobody said, "Here, here's the number. This is what it costs." This last one is the easiest thing you can change in your company when you leave here. Simply do this. Anytime somebody calls you or emails you, present them with a proposal in writing. Okay, you want to write this down. Present. Anytime somebody says, I'm interested, present a proposal in writing and give them three choices. Okay, the bottle of water that they asked about and choices on both sides of that. Do not just give them one choice. Give them three choices. A lot, a lot of your response is going to be via email, right? Landing pages from an ad. Hey, we were interested in this automobile. Okay, good. You send them back that exact car with a price, with a payment, and cars on both sides of that. Below it and above it. I want you to give people free choices. So we went in looking at that dress. She bought the dress for me because I liked it. I don't even know if she liked it. I liked it. I said, Look, hey, I like the little pink thing going on. It's kind of got that bubble thing. Show, stand up and show me oh, dress. <laughs> show, show me dress. Come on. Oh, Lord. All right. It is bubbly. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's bubbly. Okay, so I don't know if it's right for this thing, but it definitely could be a good party dress, right? How many dresses did you buy there? Six. Yeah. We went in for one thing, we're on a budget too. Okay, I said, let's go, come on, we're out of time. We gotta get, we gotta get to Prague. 
That, that transaction should have happened here. We were set to arrive here Sunday and got diverted. Not, not by accident, by promotion. <clears throat> sales data, a sale is made in every exchange. Okay, you should bring this back to your organization. Sale is made in every exchange. Every exchange results in a sale taking place. Katrina got you here or didn't get you here. Okay, there's, some, there's five people here that, did, that sold Katrina. Would you agree? Those five people convinced Katrina that they couldn't come. A sale is made in every situation. <laughs> now, now, folks, if you don't have always, if you're a manager in the room, you want to write this down. If you don't have always, you will end up with nevers. Okay, I'll show you a datum is an always. This is a truth that you operate from. Okay, at my company, we have always. We, we either have an always, we always do this on every transaction, and we end up with a never. So in my company, there's certain things we just do every time. No matter what, without fail, without exception, we do it every time. You call up and show interest, we send you back numbers. If you want numbers, we send you back numbers. Okay. If, if, in my company, if you walk, come up to the sixth floor or anywhere in the building, first floor, second floor, third floor, fifth floor, sixth floor, my employees are required to say hello to you. It's They're really also required to say, stand up. say it with a smile. <laughs> okay, this is not that hard to do. Everybody try this. People should practice this. How many agree? You're, you're, you should actually practice this with your people. I don't feel like it. I don't care. <laughs> hey man, be bright, okay? If you can't be positive, act like you're positive. Because you know what, if I could act like I'm positive, I might actually start feeling like I'm positive and good things would happen. So sales made in every transaction, okay? There's four degrees of action that I we'll talk about in this book. This is, uh, of all the books that I've written, this is a magical book, okay? It's unbelievably magical. I'm telling you, it will change your life as an executive. It'll have you, you think differently about your business and about the possibilities. So most people basically fail because they don't take the right levels of actions. There's four level of, levels of actions. All executives, all business owners, all salespeople, all staff take. There's four levels of action. All human beings do this. Number one, they do nothing. I got, okay? this. I got this right? one so I could get the other ones. They do nothing. They just do nothing. It's very, very difficult to do nothing, by the way. It takes a lot of energy and a lot of creativity. Like, you got to do a lot of like, hey, how do I do nothing? Try to do nothing right now. See, it's hard, man. It's crazy. It's almost impossible. Would you agree? Because the truth is, when I wrote this book, it has in there, do nothing. Actually, it's impossible to do nothing. Because you consider doing something, and then you retreated from it. So most of the time, what people are actually doing is number two, they're retreating. I was going to make an investment in the stock market and decided not to. That's a retreat, right? I was going to go call on that customer and decided not to. I retreated. That was not a zero activity. If you're a manager and you're judging your people on no activity, the truth is they're in retreat. They're actually backing up, okay? They're backing up from an activity rather than advancing activity. The third level is normal levels of activity. This is the most dangerous of all four. Normal, socially acceptable, approved levels of activity. I did my job today. I went to work, I showed up on time, and I left on time. This is the most dangerous of all levels because it would appear that the individual is actually doing something, right? The first two levels are completely unacceptable. Everybody agree? You see a guy walking, walking backwards. Would you be like, that's a little weird? <laughs> How many agree that would be a little weird? Okay. No, it's not weird. Seems a little weird to me. Okay, fourth level of activity is massive action. 
massive amounts of activity. Now the companies that are great, the executives that are great, they're figuring out how to take lots of action. Warren Buffett, you know this name? He's on TV three times a week. Why would one of the richest people in the world be on TV three times a week? Because he knows what it takes to be successful. Number one, what? Get attention. He's on TV three times a week. Every time he's on TV, he has one of his companies behind him. He's not scared of attention. He's not scared of selling either. Right? He's always got Coca-Cola behind him. He might be drinking one on the set. The old man, old Warren Buffett, best investor in the world, selling himself every day. He's taking massive levels of activity, using the media to his benefit so that he is relevant to today. So that you're actually thinking about his company, okay? You wanna make a note, because it's not in my slides. There's two levels of a thing called obscurity. Obscurity is the most dangerous thing to a business. Obscurity is a bigger problem than money. Companies fail because they're obscure. Obscure means, obscurity means I don't know you. How many of you have never heard my name before Katrina Coleman? How many of you have never heard of my name? That's a problem, would you agree for me? How many would believe that's a problem? That's a bigger problem than money, right or wrong. You don't know me? If you don't know me, you will not conduct business with me. Number one, the biggest problem in business is not money, the biggest problem in business is obscurity. The second business, the biggest problem in business is the next level of obscurity. I know you and forgot about you. Oh, you guys are okay. Number one, for sharing I know you, I know, I know, like I know Prague. I've heard of Prague before and I forgot about it. Could you let me forget about it? Right? Because other places got my attention. That's your problem, not mine. But it's really a problem for me too. When I walk into the city, I'm like, this place is beautiful. My God, why didn't somebody tell me? I didn't know it was called the Magic City. Is that, that's what the called? Golden City. The Golden yeah. City? Is it called the Golden City? Why don't y'all tell somebody it's called the Golden City? I got it confused with the Magic City. Right? I can only go on so many trips. It's not about the money now, it's about the time. Right or wrong? So these four levels, when, I, when you go back to your office today, I want you to put your, your, your team into these four buckets. Understand that number one is impossible. So you can just get it down to three buckets. How many of your people are retreating? How many people are doing normal? And how many people in your organization are taking massive levels of action? And then maybe look at the citizens of Prague. Okay. What's the activity level here? Or are people just wait, waiting for somebody to take care of them? Huh? Could be a lot of that. Okay. Come to America. I'm going to tell you what you're going to see in America. You're going to see a bunch of two and a bunch of three. You're going to see massive numbers, hundreds of millions of threes. Just normal. Just, hey, yeah, I went to work today. I went to work, the economy's terrible, my job's terrible, I hate people, I hate myself, I hate my marriage, I hate my kids, I hate the grocery store, I hate the prices of everything, everything's expensive, life is ridiculous, right? How many of you know people that live like this every day? Do you have people like this here, or are they just in America where we where I'm at? The more formula, okay? The more formula. The more formula is when the individual or the company does not no, continue to grow, it will cease to exist. Okay? Growth is necessary, okay? If you don't get more, you end up with less. There is no such thing as the same. The business owner that tells me we broke even last quarter is lying to himself. You didn't get into business to break even. Breaking even is losing money. The, the business owner that says, I broke even, is lying to himself. In America, uh, there's 28 million small businesses in America. 28 million small business owners in America. How many people live in, in Czech Republic? 10 million. 10 million. We have 28 million small businesses. 21 million of those small businesses have no employees. 
21 million small businesses have zero employees, okay? Now, the reason I'm telling you that is to tell you this. People in America are staying small. They're not getting big. They're, they're contracted. They're contracting because they're doing not enough to create what they need to create, okay, which is their next level of prosperity. The only people that think more is a bad thing are people that have given up on the idea of having more. So when you go back to your office, okay, look at look at where are your people operating every day? What levels of activity they're operating? Do your people want more or do your people want less? How many believe more would be better for your company? How many believe that? More customers, more attention, that can't hurt you. Thank you very much for having me, having me here today. Uh, I really, really appreciate the time to share with you and I'll be, I'll be back here to uh, answer some of your questions. Taking a short break. I'm gonna show you today I'm dressing in a minute. Because yeah. I think okay. he's the okay. best. I know he's okay. the best. Okay. She wants to take a break right here. Okay, so it's 11 o'clock. Uh, we can have a small picture. break for you to so take coffee or a drink outside, and then we come back in 15 minutes here okay. to continue. Yeah. What do y'all think? Y'all think they want to see the dress? So hold it while I. Oh, no, no, you got to get it. No, America. Okay. This is, this is what I told them. I said I only got this dress so I could buy the six others that I wanted. <laughs> she didn't want this dress. It's great, right? <laughs> These are our new friends here. Okay. Probably. Okay, say, go say goodbye. Everybody loved okay. your seminar. Hey, you guys be awesome. Fantastic. Be awesome. And come you to Prague. Amazing. You guys have to come to Prague. It's amazing here. It really is. Prague is so beautiful. I cannot believe we have to leave. Wasn't he fantastic? I love. I